Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone, for today's Distinguished Webinar Series in AI and Cybersecurity as part of uh, UNB's Center for Cybersecurity Research. Today's speaker is Dr. Tanki Hong, Assistant Professor, School of Electrical and Computer Engineering from University of Georgia. Dr. Hong received a BSc degree in Electrical Engineering from Hohai University, China in 2011, and MSc degree in Electrical Engineering from Southeast University, China, and the Engineering School of New York University. He received a PhD degree from New York University in 2016. He joined the University of Georgia as an assistant professor in 2023 fall. Prior to this, he had many years of industrial experience. He was a principal energy system scientist at ANL and a senior research scientist at Unique Technical Services, LLC. Dr. Hong serves as an editorial board member of International Transactions on Electrical Energy Systems, IEEE Transactions on Power Delivery, IEEE Transactions on Industrial Applications, and IEEE Power Engineering Letters. He also received as a special activity co-chair of IEEE IAS Industrial Power Converters Committee from 2019 to 2023. Dr. Hong, it is an extreme honor to have you as part of the webinar series at UND. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. And uh, it, the floor is yours to share your presentation. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Let me share my screen. Mm. Uh, so can everyone see my screen right now? Yes, thank you. OK. Uh, again, thank you very much for, for this opportunity to invite me to give a talk here. So the topic of today's presentation is what is regulation active distribution system. So this is the outline of today's presentation. First, I will talk about some background and motivation. And I will introduce three operations uh, for what is regulation in active distribution system. Uh, they are uh, unbalanced operation, bi-level voltage regulation, and data-driven voltage regulation. After that, I will give a conclu conclusion and share my insight to the voltage regulation topics. Uh, before that, let me first introduce uh, our university first. The University of Georgia is one of the oldest public universities in the United States. Uh, but uh, uh, we have a very old history, but we have a relatively new engineering program. So the College of Engineering is established in 2012. And then right now we have four schools under the College of Engineering. I belong to the uh, School of Electrical and Computing Engineering. And my background is uh, power system and power electronic system. So uh, too much for the distraction. Let's go back to the topic of today, uh, what is regulation. So uh, before we dive into the technical details, first let's look at uh, what is voltage regulation and why we really need voltage regulation. So if you go through the literature, there are a lot of terminology related to the voltage regulation. Sometimes it's called voltage control, sometimes it's called voltage regulation. But here in this presentation, the voltage control refers to uh, when you're looking at the model as a dynamic model, which when you look at the model, you can see the derivative here. But the voltage regulation is more referred to the system is static, which means you assume that the, the, the system is always work, uh, running in steady states when you have the, the control actions. So then the second question is why we have need voltage regulation is just here is the example of this uh, two bus system. When you want to deliver power from one terminal to the other, because the idea of the transmission, the, the, the idea of the transmission line is not ideal, you always have some impedance there, then you will, you will have certain voltage across the impedance when you have some current. And because of the, 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 the difference of I2, which can be uh, at different, has different phase angle, then you may receive a higher, uh, uh, higher amplitude of on the, uh, the V2 or lower voltage amplitude on the V2 compared with the V1. So because of this phenomenon, you either can have over voltage or under voltage. So that's the reason why we need to regulate the voltage within the certain range. So as I mentioned before, the foundation fundamental issues is we have Ohm's law. So we have some voltages across the, uh, the transmission lines. And what's the problem about this, uh, the voltage induced on the transmission lines is it may create more losses. For example, if uh, 
the power absorbing from the terminal two is constant, the lower voltage means higher current, and the higher current means more losses across the transmission lines. And it will introduce voltage stability issues. Sometimes if you, you draw a very high active power from the source, you may not have the power source solutions, which means the, the system can collapse. And it will trigger the protections or disconnections about certain part of your system from the host grid because of uh, either higher voltage or lower voltage uh, compared with uh, the planning uh, phase uh, value we want. And the solution for solve this voltage problem is very simple. We just need to operate the system voltage within an acceptable range, for example, from 0.94 to 1.06. Although the solution is very simple, a lot of research has researchers have spent a lot of time, even entire their life, trying to solve the voltage problem. The voltage regulation problem has been identified since the beginning of the AC power theory by Stanley Mates. And uh, before 1960s, people are more focusing on developing the voltage regulation devices, such as transformer with step changer or capacitor backs. Around 1963, people start to looking at the system benefit gained from voltage regulation. Uh, then they, they, they are moving from a pure device level development to system level, system level study. In, late 18, uh, in late, uh, 1980s, the term worldwide control become popular and the people start to uh, propose more complex formulation, try to, uh, try to control the reactive power of the system to achieve better uh, system level benefits. So because of the renewables and the development of power electronic uh, devices, the, the system can be operated in a more flexible way. So after 2000, there are, most of the researchers put their uh, uh, start to looking at the possibility of operating the power electronic interface to solve the voltage problem in, in both distribution system and transmission system. So uh, then what is, although I have talked about some objective about voltage regulation here, let me give you a, a, a detail, some details regarding the true objective of voltage operation or voltage regulations. From device deployment perspective, what we want is the device has the capability to compensate the voltage amplitude, which means to drive the voltage within the range, uh, for example, from 0.94 to 1.06. We also want the device to be able to compensate the, the voltage unbalanced or current unbalanced at the terminal of the devices. And we also want the, the waveform to be sinusoidal, which means we want to remove the harmonics from the either from the voltages or current. From a system operation perspective, we can classify the voltage regulation as a global regulation or local regulation. In global regulation, we can have we can implement the solution or we can set the, the set objective in a centralized way or distributed way. In a, in a local regulation, we can fully operate the, 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 the regulation in a decentralized manner, or we can have a multi-level operation. From a methodology, methodology perspective, we have model-based method, data-driven method, and a hybrid method. From the, the, the overall objective, we can operate the, the system to achieve better economic benefits, energy equity, reliability, security, uh, privacy, or resiliency. Generally, the system level operation regarding the uh, uh, for the voltage regulation under the umbrella, big umbrella of, of the distribution optimal power flow. So, so that's all for the background and motivation. So, uh, so the next topic will be the unbalanced operation. But before we directly talk, talk about the unbalanced operation, let's start from a simple case, which we assume that the system is balanced. And by assume the system balance, we the only objective for the operation is to drive the voltage, the terminal voltage within certain range, for example, from 9.6, uh, from 9.4 to 1.06. And because we assume the system is three-phase balanced, we can we can we can simplify the model by only considering the positive sequence model of the power system as showing in the figure here. And because of the Ohm's law, uh, for this simple system, we can we, we are expecting to have voltage drop as shown in this figure below. Uh, so the the the, the terminal the, the the voltage at the substation is one point oh two, 
and the end filter voltage is below 0.1. And the expectation here, we just assume that the, the expected voltage is always one. So, so this is a very simple voltage regulation problem we want to solve. And in order to achieve this expectation, what we can do is we formulate the entire requirement into an optimization uh, problem. The objective is trying to minimize the voltage deviation uh, between the actual voltage and the voltage reference. And of course, we need to consider the power flow constraint, which is the physics of the system, the voltage constraints, because sometimes you cannot achieve the, uh, the, the reference you want. And we also need to consider, consider the physics constraint about the distributed energy resources, because uh, you cannot output infinite, infinite active power and reactive power. Finally, we can consider other active devices such as a transformer cap changer or capacitor bank. So this problem is nonlinear, non-convex, sometimes with integers. Solving this problem is already very challenging, but here this is not the topic of today. Uh, so, but we just assume that we can uh, we can find a solution about this uh, uh, balanced uh, voltage regulation problem. However, uh, for the balanced voltage regulation problem, what the biggest assumption is the system is three-phase balanced. As a result, we just assume that the HDR or actual uh, active de devices or power electron interface also output a three-phase balanced power current or current. However, the truth is not in this case. In a real distribution system, we have multiple. We can have a multiple. Uh, uh, phase lines, for example, in this attribute one to three bar system, we can have three phase lines, two phase lines, and a single phase lines, which means the system is unbalanced by nature. If we still assume that the each DR or power electron interface can only output the surface balanced power or current, what is what we can expect it is if we look at the the current at the transform or the substation transformer, the current become unbalanced. So the uh, so the unbalanced operation here is very simple. Instead of 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 putting a balanced current, we try to output an unbalanced current by each power electronic in interface. By doing so, we can ideally compensate the the the, the unbalanced current at the substation transformer. Here, I only use substation transformer as an example. Of course, if your system has other critical loads such as big motor or hospitals, you can try to put the, the, the current or voltage at that terminal as the objective to compensate. So, and this is the, 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 this is the idea of unbalanced operation to change the, the balanced output of DERs to unbalanced output. And we can also look at the system unbalanced from an, uh, another, another objective uh, perspective. We just do through, uh, the, 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 the symmetric decomposition as you can see from this figure, we by implementing the unbalanced compensation, we can always assure that the power se positive sequence current is constant, and the the negative and zero sequence uh, current can be reduced through the compensation. And finally, um, we can uh, we can reduce the the negative sequence and zero sequence to zero, to the the the, the point we want to compensate. Of course, this this example demonstrates if we have we 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 only have one uh, uh power electron interface and we want to uh minimize or um or compensate certain unbalance at a certain point of the system. For example, if we have we really have a actually one two three bus system have a lot of power electron interface in the system, what we can do? So we need to go back to the previous uh voltage of uh, uh the, the the voltage compensation or regulation formulation and adding two different compensation constraints or objectives to the original formulation. The first one is called full unbiased compensation. The thing is we assume that the, the capacity of each DER is sufficient to compensate the unbalance in the or in the imbalance level of the entire distribution system. And we just need to make sure that the the, the each contribution from each uh, the contribution from each DER the summation of those kinds of unbalanced contribution is equal to the total unbalanced, the power, active power in the distribution system. And the same uh, constraint for the reactive power. With the, the, the equality constraint hole, the system imbalance can be compensated by the, the HDR or each power 
quantum interface. However, there is a po uh, possibility that the the capacity uh, the capacity of the DER is uh, insufficient to compensate the entire imbalance of the system. So if in this uh, this condition we need to up update the objective function in the previous voltage regulation problem by minimizing the voltage the by directly minimizing the apparent power difference as a node you want to compensate. In this case, it is the node of the substation transformers. And here is a numerical example of the uh, by using the actual event server system. This is uh, in this figure we have the the uncompensated uh, surface voltage. As you can see, the voltage deviation is quite big uh, from phase to phase. But after we run full unbalanced unbalanced compensation, we can see that we can largely re uh, minimize the difference between surface voltages. And we also can try to uh, solve the the voltage um, uh, voltage or uh, voltage problem by moving the voltage above to certain values. And if we don't have the the if we don't have sufficient capacity of all the DRs, we can run the partial unbalanced compensation. Here is the result if we change the objective to partial compensation. As you can see that there are two uh, scenarios. The, the first one is we assume that in each power electron interface, we do not have DERs, which means we cannot generate active power from each DERs, uh, each power electron interface. The second example is we have some distributed energy resources, uh, which means we can generate a certain active power from power electronic interface. But no matter we have the DGs or we do not have DGs, we can always reduce the voltage imba imbalance of the uh, the system from the substation transformer perspective. With all DGs, we can improve by 6%. With all DGs, we can improve by almost uh, 18%. So that's uh, just an overview about uh, voltage uh, unbalanced operation in, in active distribution system. Actually, the idea for unbalanced regulation is very simple. We try to shift the unbalanced stress from certain nodes or substation transformer to HDERs. And it is also a centralized method. However, the problem is uh, in order to, uh, to implement the centralized method, we need to make sure that we have ownership for all the power interface which is which is very hard to be satisfied in, in satisfied in uh, most of the distribution system as a result a bi level voltage regulation problem can be considered so uh, again we use the same sim simple system to introduce the setup of bi level voltage regulation problem it uh, it is actually a leader follow setup so in this four bar system we separate this four bar system into two sections the first one is host system. The second one is microgrid. The microgrid is not owned by the host system, which means the host, the, 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 the operator in the host system cannot control the device in the microgrid. And for this setup, we can have four different set of operation. The first, the first one is centralized operation, which means DR1 and DR2 regulates all the bus voltages, all four bus voltages and the calculation can be done in the central control. The second one is distributed regulation, which means DR, the DR1, DR2 are still regulated for all four bus voltages, but the calculation is done by uh, in a distributed manner. For the local regulation, we can have full decentralized compensation, which means DR1 regulate only bus two voltage and DR2 regulate only bus four voltage. And in a multi-level, which means uh, here is a bi-level voltage regulation setup, the DR1 try to regulate the host system, which means bus one and bus two, DR2 regulates microgrid. And also the DR1 also need to consider the interaction between the host system and the microgrid. Now the question is if these four different setup result in different voltage profile and dispatch solutions, so here is the, the answer of, about those uh, the, the, the previous questions. Yes, for different uh, problem setup, the result is different and the dispatch solution are also different. As you can see that without compensation, we can have the, the base case, which is the blue lines. With global compensation, we achieve the right line. And with bad level, we have the purple lines. And for the local compensation, we only have, we can have the, the green line. At this moment, it is very hard to say which one is better. But the purpose here is just to see that different setup 
do result in different solutions. And we can generalize the previous setup into a more a general way, a more general system. Here, the, the, the assumption is in a system, we have a host system, which can be a utility on distribution feeders. And we have a lot of lower level subsystem, which can be microgrids, smart community, and university campuses. The assumption here is the host system cannot directly control the, the, the each subsystem, but they are physically connected through the electric electrical lines, and they can have some uh, in, they can exchange certain information. And in the following discussion, we're only talking about this bilevel regulation from host perspective. Uh, so um, again, we can, we we go back to we here we directly I directly give the comparison between the the formulation about the global regulation and the bilevel voltage regulation. So I already introduced the the formulation of global regulation. So in the bilevel regulation, take this simple example, a uh, simple system as an example. The objective here for from a host perspective is still to try to minimize the voltage deviation of bus one and bus two as the objective function here. And then we need to consider the physical constraints in this host system. Apart from that, we also need to consider the, from a host perspective, we need to consider the interaction between the host system and the microgrid. As I just mentioned, the microgrid can have its own operation, which need to another level of optimization problem. And the solution about the optimization problem directly, uh, uh, directly impacts the, the 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 interaction between the host and 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 the, and the lower level system. So this is how the bilevel voltage regulation problem formulated, and the, the 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 all the equations under the uh the right rectangle re represents the interaction between host and the microgrid. And here, as I mentioned before, uh, so different system can have different objectives. Since we are talking about voltage regulation here. So the host host system objective is always set to minimize the voltage deviation within the host system. However, the local system can have two different kinds of uh, objective functions. The first one is still they are trying to minimize the voltage deviation within the microgrid. The second one is they try to do loss minimization. Now the problem is how to solve this bilevel voltage regulation problems. Now generally, if you look at the go back to look at the circuit, what the, the interaction here is we try to model the lower level problem as a load, which can be represented as a function between the terminal voltage and the output apparent power from the, 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 the lower level problem. But just the, the, the calculation is quite complex. It's, it's the solution is uh, can, you need to be obtained through solving an optimization problem. And in order to solve this bilevel voltage regulation, there are many existing methods can be uh, adopted. The first one is KKT method, but this this method is not good for the very complex the uh, lower level problem, and especially the uh, the the problem is highly nonlinear with uh, integer involved. The second one is iteratively solving method. Generally, we can solve the upper level problem and pass the parameter to lower level problem and solve the lower level problem and pass the parameter to upper level problem and repeat the process again. But uh, this kind of problem normally need a long time to solve the, the, the problem and sometimes it's very hard to converge. The third one is heuristic searching method. We can directly put the whole problem into the heuristic solver and wait for the solver to output the result. The last one is machine learning based reformulation method. Generally, uh, we can try to use different machine learning model to represent the lower level problem. And we by doing so, we can convert the lower level problem into, we can convert the final problem in, into different uh, problem types, such as mixed integer linear programming, smooth nonlinear programming, or mixed integer nonlinear programming. So uh, of course, there are a lot of machine learning methods to try Try to represent the lower level problem in this talk. I will just use the uh, show an example of using deep neural network based model, uh, deep neural network model to modeling the lower level problem. The major reason for selecting the deep neural network is it is the simplest neural network method with sufficient accuracy. It preserves the data privacy and it uh, it, it 
has multiple formulation selection uh, potentials. And generally, the idea is we have the the, the interaction uh, as described described in the equation here, and then we try to represent the, the those kind of model using a deep neural network. And of course, in order to get get the parameter of this deep neural network, we need to generate the training data, and we need to solve another optimization problem, as shown here. The good thing about the neural network based method is we can change the activation function by uh, by doing so we can uh, control the the final formulation about the 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 single stage problems. Here is a two examples. The first one is we can use ralu based method to convert the problem uh, to which offers a mixed integer constraints. We also can use hyperbolic tangent functions to uh, which offers smooth nonlinear constraints. And after the training process, the weight and the bias are the data we need to send to the host system to, to integrate into their models to solve, to convert the better problem into a single stage problem. So the, the, there are for to, to enable the, the successful training, there are some certain tricks we need to implement when you try to train to, 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 to get the model of the lower level problem. The biggest part is here we need to relax the voltage con constraint. Uh, we, we, we the purpose here is we try to remove the we try to make the invisible point to the feasible point. Because when you have so when you have certain operations, there are the possibility that the lower level problem does not have a solutions, which means you don't have a feasible operation point for the lower level problem. So in order to uh, when you have the invisible point, in order to differentiate with the feasible and the invisible point, you also need to add a classifier, try to indicate that if this solution is feasible or not. Additional classifier means more training and um, more computational borders. So here, the solution is we try to add a slack variable here to convert the hard voltage constraint, constraint to relax one. And if we can try to minimize the, 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 the slack, the, the the amplitude of the select variables, the relaxation can be exact. Since we modify the lower level training problem by adding the select variables, we also need to change the upper level problem, try to minimize the size of the select variables. Generally, as I mentioned, if the select variable is zero, the relaxation is exact. So the, the single state problem is exact with the previous uh, bilevel problem. And here is summarized about the algorithm of solving the bilateral voltage regulation problem based on deep neural network. I will not go into the details. Uh, the, the details has already been covered by previous slides. So after we have the method, we use certain numeric examples to test the performance of the proposed method of solving the bilateral voltage regulation problem. Here in this example, we use the attribute one to three bus a uh, system with two microgrid. And uh, the, the two microgrid are real distribution system in our state. Uh, to, we also do some modification for the real distribution system. We remove the feeder C from the, the system. And the capacity, the active power and reactive uh, power about the feeder are shown here. In this example, we have more than six, uh, 45 different variables in both uh, with both real variables and integer variables. The location, about the, the DERs and the Lexi, uh, trans, Lexi uh, body regulation devices are showing me finding the figure as shown here. So in the first example, we disable the microgrid two and we also disable the capacitor bank in microgrid one. The phase, the, the phase B and phase C regulators on bus uh, 160 is disabled the cost of microgrid is fixed to voltage regulation, which means the objective for the host system and the microgrid are the same. And here is the training information. We generate a solid data and the data generation time is around 45 seconds. The training time is 160 and 170. And here is just a testing performance about the train the deep neural network model. As you can see, the accuracy is pretty good. And we try to integrate the deep neural network into the upper level problem, convert it into a single stage problem, and solved by the, uh, the commercial uh, Groovy solvers. We also com compare the 
deep neural network training performance with other existing methods such as uh, support vector machine and Gaussian kernel, the deep network has best performance. So uh, here is the solution results. We compare the proposed method with many different other solutions. The first one is we, we, we compare the ReLU-based activation function with hyperbolic tangent-based function. And we also compare with heuristic search with centralized method. According to the solution, uh, different solution, uh, the, the matrix, we can see that the, the, the hyperbolic tangent-based method offers, uh, offers a good a result in what is deviation minimization, uh, uh, derivation minimization, and we, the solution time of this method is also minimal. Even we consider the total training time here, the solution time is still uh, acceptable for solving such a complex problem compared with the other candidates. So in the second example, we try to activate everything, and we set the objective for microgrid one as voltage regulation, the microgrid two as loss minimization. So at this moment, we have different objectives. And here is the training uh, training data information for different microgrid. We still generate 1,000 data. The, of course, since the problem become more complex, the data generation is uh, take much longer time, but the training time is still the same. And uh, we also try to solve the second scenario with different methods. However, the heuristic search and the ROLU-based uh, deep neural network deep neural network method cannot find a solution within five hours. In comparison, the hyperbolic tangent-based deep neural network method can, ha can have the solution within only a sec second, around eight seconds. And if you look at the, the voltage deviation minimization results, is quite good. So here is the voltage profile before and after you, uh, we implement the, the ballet voltage regulation solutions. We can see that the voltage profile of after we implement the result become much better than previous one. Okay, so uh, right now we, we finished, uh, I just uh, generally introduced the concept or idea of high-level voltage regulation problem setup and the corresponding solutions. So the advantage of the ballet voltage regulation, uh, the proposed method is like it preserves the data privacy and it offers acceptable computational expense. The disadvantage is that it needs data, gener data generation and offline training. The performance is limited by the model accuracy. However, the problem here is if we can learn part of the constraints, can we learn the entire of the constraints, which is described in this blue, uh, uh, blue uh, the green box. And by doing so, actually we are converting the model-based method into a data-driven or multiple model free optimization. We also can add online optimization feature to the, to the, the method. For the data driven and the model free optimization, generally we have two um, solution strategies. The first one is fast learning simple models. The second one is comprehensive model with a lot of, which, which requires a lot of data. In this presentation, I will only talk about the fast learning simple model strategies. So uh, I will not go into very details. I will just talk, uh, focus on the 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 the, the uh, idea about the method. So here is a, we go back to the or, uh, previous uh, global water regulation problem. The only uh, part related to the model is this power flow model, which you can uh, consider as the Ohm's law here. And the simple example, uh, simple uh, idea is we can linearize those nonlinear uh, equations into a linear mapping between the power output and the voltage amplitude at each bus. And the only parameter we need to learn from the data is uh, the J matrix and the BIOS uh, U0. And we can use the recursive least square algorithm to learn the J and the U0. And then we can perform the nonlinear optimization every recursive step or in a batch manner. The part, uh, another further step we can think is uh, if the linearization is appropriate here because the power flow models are nonlinear by nature. So here is a simple example compare the linear and the nonlinear uh, mappings. If you have a linear uh, mappings, the, the, if you do the online optimization, the solution may trap in the middle of nowhere because of the inaccuracy about the, the, the models, the, 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 the models. If you have a nonlinear mapping, you can achieve better results. So 
now the so how to achieve the nonlinear mapping? The idea is we can approximate the 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 power flow constraint using a kernel functions. The kernel function is con uh, it contains the nonlinear kernel basis. The only parameter we need to know to learn from the from the from the measurement is the matrix A here. Different nonlinear kernel basis can be applied, such as uh, a polynomial kernel functions or Gaussian kernel functions. Now the question is how to compute the which weight matrix A. So there are a lot of methods uh, uh, that can be compute here. Uh, since we are use the kernel, so we use kernel regressions. Uh, we are not. We are, I will not talk about the kernel regression in detail here. But generally, uh, this is the objective function of uh, kernel regression. And because of this objective function, we can easily derive the analytic solution of this color regression as shown here. Uh, if here, if the phi, phi x is uh, is an identity function, this this kernel regression is becomes a linear ridge regression problem. And the solution, because of uh, the the sol direct solution of color regression is very computational and memory expensive, we can use matrix inversion lemma to simplify the matrix multiplication and save some memories. And we can further apply the blockwise the inversion uh, equations to convert the batched method into a recursive update. And then we can uh, compute the, the kernel models in a required recursive fashion. And finally, we can type compute the matrix A by showing, showing here. After we can represent the nonlinear power flow function by using a kernel function we can and we can uh, rewrite the original global voltage regulation problem into a kernel based voltage regulation problem and further consider the interior point method with logarithmic barrier function to reformulate the, the, the problem in this way and the new method can be directly applied to solve this method if the system starts from an infeasible initials the objective function can be switched into a slack variable minimization to find a feasible solution first However, if we go back to the previous matrix inversion here, uh, go back to the records, uh, the final result of uh, about the matrix A here, we can see that the match the size of matrix A related to the number of the merit voltage. If you have a very large voltage uh, system, which means the matrix A will be very big, and it is still very computationally expensive and uh, and memory uh, memory uh, expensive. So here is a is a short solution is we can convert the global voltage regulation into with a centralized implementation into a distributed data-driven online voltage regulation problem. And we can rewrite the, 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 the centralized formulation into an agent-based uh, uh, voltage regulation problem. The, the, re, the formulation, re, uh, the reformulation is exact between the, the top one and the lower one. And then we can use different distributed computation to force the coupled uh, system into decoupled one and uh, solve it in a di distributed manner. So uh, in this example, we are using a Turner uh, alternating direction method of multiplier to solve this uh, dis uh, distributed data-driven online voltage regulation problem. Uh, although the equation here is very complex, uh, but the, it, it just directly uh, follows the, the standard ADMM method. Uh, the reason why the, the notation is ugly is because you, have a, you need to define a lot of uh, set and the boundary variables about different regions. Uh, in order to have an exact representation about the problem, uh, you you the 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 formula the, the the formulation become a little bit complex here. Uh, but uh, the, the the update rule is exactly same with the standard ADM map. So uh, we. Uh, finally, after introduce the distributed and centralized data-driven online voltage regulation, we have some example to test the performance about the method. The first one is we have a, a still we have one two three bar system to test the centralized data-driven case. Here we uh, instead we in order to test the online learning and the fast learning performance, we have different events during the simulation. The first one is we ch change the transformer type changer at certain point. The second one is we try to uh, step up and stand down the load of certain point. So here is the example. As you can see, that the so this is the voltage about uh, the during the voltage regulation process. As you can see, that the system start from the invisible point, which means we have a very low voltage or very high voltage here. 
but after we 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 implement the 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 data driven method, as we can as we can see that the voltage has been uh, is fast uh, regulated within the certain value, uh, only need twenty data or twenty samples, and after that. Uh, the system is already uh, well regulated at a certain point, and at the 100 samples, we 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 implement the event one, which means we change the transformer type change, and we can we can see that what it has just stepped down at here, and uh, but the 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 system can still operate uh, can can be uh, the the proposed method can still operate smoothly, and at event two, we lower the certain loads at certain uh load, uh loads at certain nodes, so. Uh, the we can still see the water is still within the certain limit, and of course the 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 update here is very minimal, so we cannot uh, see clearly from the voltage. But if you can you, you look at the the figure below about the objective here, as we can see in the beginning during the learning phase we have large error at the large jumps at the objective function and the error curves. Uh, after around thirty samples, everything becomes smooth. The error is reduced to a very small level. And when the event A1 happens, you can see the error increase a little bit, but quickly reduce to the certain value because the model is updated by the proposed kernel uh, method. And the cost is keep reducing to the certain value. And the, the similar, similar event can be observed from the event two. And we also compare the data driven method with the, the centralized method. We can see that although the proposed uh, result is not, I, Equal to the 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 centralized uh, to the the heuristic search method, but uh, the difference is quite small. And uh, the, in the second example, we try to use a large network, which is APRI uh, thirty five, contains more than two thousand nodes. Uh, and uh, and uh, here we also perform uh, do a comparison between the linear fun kernel function with quadratic kernel function. As you can see that with the linear kernel functions, the objective function cannot minimize to, is, is similar with what we observed previously. It traps in the middle of nowhere, but with the uh, uh, nonlinear functions, we can have, a, we can achieve a lower uh, voltage deviations. And also, and it, it is not because of the, the, the error of the, the, the model. As you can see, both linear and nonlinear kernel errors are very small during the operation. And here I also show the, the 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 computational time of each step for the updates, the the, the models and the learning. It only takes one seconds, so it's quite uh, fast compared with the complex model, and uh, do not re uh, require a lot of data. So finally, I just uh, give an example about distributed the data driven case, which I still use actually one to three bus system. Here I I just uh, separate the attribute one two three bus system into uh, different regions seven different regions and the region are not necessarily need to be physically connected as you can see the region two the two failures are not connected they are connected through region three but it doesn't matter so uh, the uh, but you, uh, here is an example about the convergence process about the distributed the data driven uh, method as you can see that all the all the the the, the voltage at the boundary converge at the uh, uh, in the end of the, the operation, which means the the distributed method converge and it's the, the, the distributed problem are exact with the, uh, the, the centralized version. And the, uh, the good thing about the kernel based method and distributed method is we can arbitrarily change the kernel types of different uh, regions. For example, we can have mixed kernel selections. We can have linear kernel selection for all regions. We can have quadratic kernel selection for all regions. So by doing so, we can uh, actively uh, improve the performance or reduce the computational time uh, about the system. For example, if the region are very simple, we can directly use the linear uh, kernel type to speed up the calculation. If the system are quite, if the region is uh, is uh, quite uh, complex, always uh, transformer type change. We can use nonlinear kernel to improve the accuracy. And here is the average the uh, computational time per samples. For the mixed one, we can have 1.5 se uh, seconds. You know, using linear arm, we only have 0 0.02. And for the nonlinear one, we need to have a longer computational time. So, and the, the corresponding solution uh, between the, 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 the base case, the, the search, heuristic search, 
and the centralized curl proposed in the previous slides are shown here. Uh, so uh, the as you can see that the the, the speed are, are really improved and the performance is also very good. So uh, that's the, all the uh, methods or the voltage regulation uh, scenarios I want to discuss today. So here is some uh, conclusions. First, the distribution system, not because of the renewables and the power electronics interface, start to and the electric vehicles, the distribution system become more active and uh, offers more control abilities. Uh, this is a good thing for distribution system, but uh, it also brings more challenges or administrative complexities to the operation of, of distribution systems. And it, all, it also introduced the operational complexities. So data-driven and AI-enabled operation method might be a good solution to solve all those kinds of problems and offers better uh, performance to the system operations. However, the data involvement introduced more risks, such as we need to start to look at the data integrity problem. For example, we have missing data or false data, how to solve the problem. And it uh, also uh, uh, borders the attack surface about the existing distribution system. We need to worry about the cyber attack. And uh, in addition, because of the, the existence of the data integrity, the cyber attack or also potential fault to the distribution system, we need to uh, spend more uh, effort to looking at the abnormal tolerant operations uh, during the design of the voltage regulation, uh, voltage regulation problems. Uh, so finally, I want to uh, acknowledge the, the Department of Energy, uh, our National Lab, and the University of Georgia of their support of uh, performing those kinds of those uh, studies. And also, I want to thank my previous colleagues and supervise the students for their support and efforts. Uh, finally, thank you all for, for joining this uh, presentation, and uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Hong. Um, for your great presentation. I think we have some questions populating um, in, uh, let's see, um, in slide 40, what do the blue and black plots signify? Could you go back to your slide 40? And there's a question on uh, some blue and black plots, yeah. So the, uh, okay, so the blue, the blue one is uh, node voltage on uh, 160 regulator phase C. The red one is uh, the 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 what no the voltage on uh, six, uh bus sixty six uh, phase C and the black one is an example of pure learning, which means uh, which I missed part. So uh so the red one is when you do the kernel uh, when you do the kernel regression, uh, add some noise to the command to speed up the training process. But if we remove the noise, we still can uh learn the 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 uh, the power system model by only using the solution computed from the uh, interior point method. And uh, the curve below is the, the blue one is the true objective function, which we know uh, we have the parameter of, about the system we can compute uh, from the uh, directly from the equation. The red one is uh, estimated uh, from the proposed uh, kernel models. And the green one, uh, the, the green one is the arrow uh, of the kernel models. Uh, we have another question from Mohsin Atta. Mohsin, do you want to ask? Yeah, yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for giving this opportunity. I want to uh, ask you questions. What is the difference between pure learning and uh, aggressive learning? And uh, what represents these technologies and these methods are used uh, in this voltage regulation? Can you please explain? Uh, so, so here, Q learning is not the pure learning you you refer to the. So, so uh, I didn't have the equation here. Uh, let let me go back see if I can. So here is the thing. Uh, after we solve this uh, this uh, optimization, what we get is x. X is uh, the the op output of the uh, the the p and the q of the drs, right? So there are two solutions. So one is we directly feed this. Q uh, the P and Q to the system and uh, try to dispatch those solutions. The second one is on top of this PQ, we add a small noise and we try this more like the idea of disturbing the system 
to to learn the, to try to learn the system better. So that's uh, the difference between uh, here in this figure uh, in the, the the difference between the pure learning and the, the the red curve. The red curve is with small noise on top of the the solution uh the solution, but the noise is is uh, declining when the, you have more samples. The pure learning is that we I directly remove the the, the noise and just use the output of, of the, the the optimization solution and implement into the system to to get the feedback of the the the, the measurement. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you so nice. We have a couple of other questions. You know, has any graph neural network based solutions be applied to solve this problem? No. No. So so um. Uh, let me go back to the previous. So as I mentioned, if you want, so there are two two solution strategies. The first one is the fast learning simple model, which as I described here. The other one is comprehensive model with lots of data. By considering the graph of the system, you need a lot of data uh, to to train the model in order to to receive to to receive a good performance. And by doing so, you the the, the method you the method you propose might not be able to solve it within one or two um within one or two seconds. Even you can some people can claim that they can offline training and generate a result very fast, but then that as a result during the training process, you need to consider all the potential scenario of a system, such as all the potential load change, the configuration of the topologies, and the plugin devices or EVs, which which is a lot of data, very large data set. You need to put into the training models and you, you output them uh, in the, that setup, you can output the result very fast. But if there is an unexpected expected scenario happens, the solution might, might not be good. So in the in this talk, what I focus on is uh, fast learning, which means I do not consider so many different scenarios. If the system change, I just learn it again, but the learning time is quite fast, which only requires certain 30 samples to 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 converge the model can converge and if there is another uh change of our system i just get rid of of the old model and learn a new one so that's uh the the, the whole whole idea here uh good um for, for other participants if you have any questions can you raise your hands we can allow you to talk you know and uh, so uh on the zoom you know if you, anybody wants to ask questions directly to the speaker please raise your hand so we're happy to promote you as a panelist. We have one question. Would it be effective to advance by using evolutionary algorithms such as genetic algorithm? Yeah, that, that that's a good question. That is the area I also want to look at, but uh, I haven't uh, started to 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 try that uh, that kind of uh, method. Because those one right now is too expensive. You need to have a, a, a very expensive hardware to 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 implement the 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 ChatGPT stuff. Ibrahim, you want to ask? Ibrahim Elamin, do you want to ask a question? You have to unmute. Ibrahim, you have to unmute yourself to ask the question. You're not. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you very much. No, I don't have a question to ask. Thank you. Sorry. No question? No, thank you. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, Dr. Hong, um, I have one question. Have you, is your IEEE bus system that you consider or the EPRI one, did you consider different uh, different types of feeder types or, you know, this data-driven solution actually applies to a particular feeder type? I uh, I, I believe it can apply to different uh, feeder type. So I didn't consider that features. I just, just uh, in, in addition to the uh, test feeder I showed here, I just applied to uh, adding uh, IEEE uh, test system to, to test the solution and uh, all type of uh, feeders works. So uh, I don't think it uh, rely on the certain types. You have three yeah. events, you know, you have different buses topology and you have radial loop feeders, parallel feeders. And I was just curious to see if it has any effect on the computational time, depending on where the event has occurred and how the propagation of this, uh, you know, those, uh, you know, initial peaks that you saw, you know. Anyway, I was just... Uh, 
it, it definitely affects it will change a little bit. For example, it, it can double. For example, for this case, it spent uh one point five seconds for the Mr. case. But if I I I, I re design the region, it can goes to two seconds. Or uh, it uh, is a huge change, but uh, it's not that huge compared if if it's only uh several seconds, right? And I do uh test a different type type of the feature in this distributed case. For example, you can see that I, I, I highlight a switch here. I try to create a loop in the distributed system to see if the proposed method can, can converge and works. And uh, yeah, it works. Um, it can work for both radio and the loop the system. I didn't try meshed, but uh, I, I think it's gonna be uh, fine, yeah. We have one last question. How the three-dimensional search space is plotted or was it just the abstract model for demonstration? Uh, it's a simple, a simple voltage regulation problem. Uh, it's I only have like active power and reactive power for a DR and a four bar system as I've just mentioned before. So there is only so the searching there are only two variables here and the 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 the, the, the z axis is the objective function and the the blue one the blue service is uh, the exact analytic objective function service we we can compute and the red one is the estimated represented by the different kernel method. Great. Um, I think that concludes our uh, Q&As. Thank you so much for participating in this webinar in uh, contribution to your time. We will send you a nice plaque from UND and uh, we look forward to chat with you to see how we can find ways to collaborate. And thank you so much for being part of this webinar, Dr. Hong. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation again. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for this next, next opportunity. Bye-bye. Bye. This concludes the webinar.